You'll now look at spirometry and lung volume. Here you can see that I've written out here what a spirometric graph looks like. The y-axis is volume, commonly referred or used in terms of milliliters per kilogram, and on the x-axis is time. Here you can follow this blue line as we ask our patient to simply passively respirate, which means just breathe normally without actively contributing to that inspiration or expiration. Here, in this huge upstroke, we ask the patient to breathe in to their maximum capacity of air actively, so an inspiratory gasp, followed by an active expiration of air, meaning they blow out their air as fast as possible following their huge inspiration, followed by a return to this passive respiration. I'll now go through this diagram and label certain parts of the diagram that are clinically useful. This first black box here on the left refers to our TLC, or total lung capacity. You can see that this black box encompasses the entire chart, meaning that any sort of volume that's relevant to the lungs is included in your TLC. Next, when we're talking about the volume fluctuations that deal with simple passive respiration, or just passively breathing without thinking about it, we refer to that as TB, or tidal volume. Tidal volume is the volume fluctuation from normal inspiration and expiration while passively respiring. respiring excuse me. The difference in volume between the maximum of tidal volume, or while you're inspiring or breathing in during tidal volume, and the absolute maximum of total lung capacity is known as your inspiratory reserve volume, or IRV. Again, this is the difference between the maximum of tidal volume and the maximum of total lung capacity. The difference between the minimum of tidal volume and this line down here, which I'll explain in a little bit, is known as expiratory reserve volume, or ERV. Now, the screen line down here, you'll note our blue line, meaning the volume of air in our lungs, never dips down past that green line. As you'll see here, it abruptly stops where that green line and turns back positively. What is this green box down here? This is known as our RV, or residual volume. The green line down here that I was just talking about, you can see that our lung volume never dips down past. Even when we're actively expiring as much as possible, pushing out of air as strong as we can, our lung volume will never dip down below this arbitrary point. It's different for each person. This point down here, this box rather, this minimum volume of air inside the lungs is known as your residual volume. No matter how hard you push or expire, you will never have less air or less volume of air in your lungs than your residual volume. This is very clinically important. Now there are two further, two other arbitrary boxes here that are clinically important when talking about lung volume. And those two boxes are your VC, which is your vital capacity, and your vital capacity includes your inspiratory reserve volume, your tidal volume, and your expiratory reserve volume, but not your residual volume, excuse me, and your FRC, which stands for functional residual capacity. Functional residual capacity encompasses ERV and RV. Both of those boxes, which seem a bit arbitrary, are very important when you start getting, talking about clinical applications of lung volume and spirometry. So now we're going to examine what this actually means. So we have our patient standing in front of our diagram. The patient right now is taking uh, minimal breaths, and this is going to be the patient's tidal volume. Uh, the patient really isn't thinking about breathing. It's just their inspiratory and expirations that are naturally occurring. Next, we just caught our patient at the very bottom of their tidal volume. So they just let out all the air naturally. Next, we're going to ask the patient to expire as, most, as much as they can. So you can see that our patient is pointing to the lowest point that they can. That is going to be their expiratory reserve volume. And that's going to be the difference from the bottom of that tidal volume, so when they're naturally breathing, when they blow out all their air, to the point where they blow out as much air in the lungs as they can. Um, and notice that as far down as they got, 
there's still a little bit of air left in the lungs. And that's going to be the residual volume. And that's going to be the air that's going to be either within the alveoli, keeping them open, or the dead space within the airway. Um, and that's going to make up your residual volume. So now we have our patient, again, breathing normally. They haven't been thinking about it. Um, so now we catch them at the very top of inspiration in their tidal volume. They're taking normal breaths, but now we're going to ask him to stop as soon as he gets the, his air into his lungs. Next, we're going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in, as much as they can uh, in. So that, now they're at their inspiratory reserve volume. And that's going to be the point from the uh, bottom of, or the top of their tidal volume to the top of their lung capacity. That is going to be your inspiratory reserve volume. So now you can see that in the vital capacity, it's going to be a mixture of when he blew out as much air as he could to the point where he brought in as much air as he could. Um, also, we're going to throw in the term total lung capacity, and that's going to be his whole lungs, so as much air as his lungs can take in to completely no air within the lungs. Um, we'll never be able to see that clinically. That's going to be based on residual volume, which there are measurements that we can make, um, but clinically here, asking the patient to blow out their reserve volume is impossible. So next, um, finally, we've got the functional reserve capacity, and that, again, we're not able to actually measure because the residual volume, we're not able to actually ask him to blow that out. Um, and that is going to be the clinical basis for the lung diagram.